Yes, my grandfather worked with Thomas Edison on the electric car, and he sold electric cars at the 1900 World's Fair in Paris. It turns out electric cars have been around for a long time. The world's first practical electric car was driven along a Paris street in 1881, the Gustave Trouve tricycle. The first production electric car was built in 1884 in London by English inventor Thomas Parker. Actually, the first vehicle to break the 100 km per hour speed barrier was a Belgian electric car, the Jamais Condente. Pardon my French, driven by Belgian race car driver Camille Genazzi in 1899. In the early 1900s in America, 40% of vehicles were steam powered, 38% electric, and 22% gasoline. This is a picture of Thomas Edison posing in front of an electric car in 1913. Actually, early American electric cars were somewhat stigmatized by the perception that they were women's cars. They didn't require the user to change gears, they didn't have the smell, vibration, and noise of petrol-powered cars, and they didn't require any effort to start. Petrol-powered cars at the time relied on a hand crank. However, due to their slow speed, low range, lack of charging infrastructure, and their expensive price tag, the electric vehicle lost the race for automobile dominance. Thanks to the introduction of the mass production of the Ford Model T by Henry Ford, the price of petrol-powered cars fell dramatically. They were more reliable, could travel a lot further for cheaper, and cost only about half as much as an electric vehicle at the time. Petrol was king, and consumer electric vehicles were lost in the annals of history. Until recently, that is. In 2006, Tesla Motors unveiled the ultra-sporty Tesla Roadster, having a decent range of almost 400 kilometers, but with the fairly hefty price tag of $98,950, it was never really going to reach a mass market, but it did pique people's interest. The Mitsubishi i Miev was released in Japan in 2009, obviously targeting a much different audience, but at a price tag of $48,800 in Australia, it was still seen as being too expensive for what you got, and never really made a dent in the market. One thing that history has taught us is that price matters. If an electric vehicle is more expensive than its petrol counterpart, then sales will be weak. Anyway, enough of the history lesson, let's jump forward to 2020. American company Tesla actually scheduled to roll out their very first Chinese-produced car in Shanghai today, that is, the 30th of December 2019. Obviously, the reason they're producing cars in China is for the cheap labor and production costs, plus the local tax incentives. The Model 3, which will be built in the factory, will be priced from $50,000, so still not quite at a price level that will make it a mass-market vehicle. However, it was the best-selling electric vehicle in the US in 2019 by a long margin, making up 63% of all electric vehicle sales. But 2020, on the other hand, might just be the year when things start to really shine for electric vehicles. Tesla predicts that they'll be able to reduce the price of the Model 3 by almost 20% in 2020 as it starts to use more locally produced components and reduces its costs. German automaker Volkswagen have announced that they're accelerating their move into electric cars. They predict that they will achieve their goal of 1 million electric cars per year two years earlier than planned. That is, they plan to produce a million battery-powered cars in 2023 instead of 2025, and could potentially reach 1.5 million cars per year by the end of 2025. That's a lot of electric cars flooding the market from a single company. VW are planning to raise their production and increase their sales figures of their ID. 3 model, which should be priced at less than €30,000, so about 48000 Australian dollars. It's said to have a range of up to 550 kilometers, so that will certainly curtail everyone's range anxiety fears. For the first time, Volkswagen have offered pre-booking for the ID3, with over 37,000 customers having reserved the car to date. Production of the ID3 began last month from VW's massive Zwickau factory in Germany, but still, in my opinion, the price tag of the ID3 is a bit steep for a mass market vehicle. I would suggest that it would have to come down substantially before Volkswagen can really hit that 1 million electric cars a year figure. A similar sized VW Golf can be bought for about $25,000 in Australia, so who's going to pay double that for the ID3? It will take some massive market forces for ordinary people to start buying electric cars instead of petrol ones. I might be wrong though. China, of course, are really going full steam ahead when it comes to electric vehicle production. However, sales have fallen in recent months, partly due to the Chinese government significantly limiting their new energy vehicle incentives. Australia isn't doing much better, with the Victorian and New South Wales governments considering introducing a tax on electric vehicles. Why? 
because electric vehicle owners won't pay fuel excise, as they won't be using fuel. Currently, that's more than 41 cents per litre, which brings in something like $12 billion a year in revenue. If you drive an electric vehicle, the government misses out on that tax, so naturally, they want to recoup their losses by charging you to drive. Not exactly the best way to encourage people to use an electric car. One idea that is being bandied about is for electric car owners to be slugged with a per kilometre charge. That is, the more you drive, the more tax you will pay, not dissimilar to the current fuel excise. In theory, the tax is designed to pay for road maintenance and infrastructure, but in reality, it gets diverted to the federal budget's consolidated revenue fund. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Will 2020 be the year that the electric vehicle market really takes off? What will it take for the average consumer to make the switch? Are the vehicles still too expensive? Are governments compounding the issue by trying to get their grubby little hands in on everything? Should we be rewarding electric vehicle owners, not taxing them? Let me know your thoughts below.